Good morning, everyone. Whoa, I like that response. Always a bigger crowd on Saturday. That's nice. Come on Friday nights, man. Get the full experience. But yes, good morning. Welcome. Just a little bit of Jewish guilt in the beginning. You know, we got to give you a little bit. That's all. But yes, welcome. And why is it such a good morning? It is Shabbat. Yes. The second half, the culmination of our God-given gift, day of rest, our Torah portion service, and uh, what a wonderful day to be alive, and another chance, another opportunity to learn how to cultivate a relationship with the Lord. And uh, welcome, if you're new here, new tuning in online, this is Mishkan David, which is just a little bit of Hebrew for Tabernacle of David, and because I believe we so perfectly emulate what it says in Amos chapter 9 and verse 11, the very purpose of this place and what we're doing here, why we're gathered, not only was this His day sanctified for us, given to us as a gift, but we do everything and follow everything that Messiah Yeshua said and did. And so because He chose Shabbat, we want to be like Him and choose Shabbat for ourselves. And so that is why this place is so powerful, because we're coming in agreement, Jew and Gentile alike, telling them in Acts 15 and Acts 21 that maybe that wasn't so Holy Spirit-led, separating the Jews from the Gentiles, you know, because they said, it seemed unto us and the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? They made an assumption. And what does an assumption do? It makes up out of you and me, right? Okay. So by the grace of God, we aren't assuming we are taking the words for face value, Messiah Yeshua said, go and teach everything that I have taught. And so we follow him, and that is why this place is so powerful. And like it says in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, there will I be in the midst of you. And so we know that he's here, he is with us, he is in us, and we are creating an environment for Holy Spirit power. And so I would ask that you please rise the Rebbitson, our dear Rebbitson, is going to take us through the call to worship. If you are uh, interested in a sound, if there should be the most important sound that you hear, if you've been with us for a year already, you know that this sound has a significance, the signifying of the return of our Messiah. But just like everything else with the Lord is multidimensional, it is not just the sound of His return. It also is the call to peace, the call to war, the call to attention. And so every single detail, when you break it down in the Lord, it becomes more beautiful and more wonderful the more you decide to pay attention. And then communally, congregationally, we're going to declare the Shema together because that is what keeps this place going, is the Shema, when each and every single one of us decide as individuals to allow Him to write His laws on our hearts in our inward parts. And so we're going to do that together, and uh, we're going to enter into this course with thanksgiving and with praise. We're going to receive a word from the Lord. We all believe that, right? I certainly do. And then hopefully we take that word and we run with it. But God bless you all. Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yeshua, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. As we get ready to listen to the call to worship, the call to peace, thank you T, for alerting to everyone as to what this really means. I would also like to encourage you, as you listen to the sound of the shofar, to please call upon the name of Yeshua, the name above every name. Remember that without him, he said, you can do nothing. And so we call upon his name, if you haven't been doing it already, this congregation is all about being, practicing the presence of God and abiding in his presence. That is where not only is there fullness of joy, but there's blessings. And as Rabbi taught last night, there is healing. So call upon the name of the Lord, the name above every name. Re remember that without him, there is no Shabbat Shalom because he is the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, as we listen to the call to worship and the call to peace.
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. This is the first and great commandment. is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the Torah and the prophets. Blessed art thou, o Lord our God, King of the universe, who separates the holy from the profane. Blessed art thou, o Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us a Shabbat of rest, a day of rest for our souls, a day of rest in you, in your presence. Blessed art thou, o Lord our God, King of the universe, who commands us and extends the opportunity and the privilege for us to commune, to fellowship with you the God of the universe, who has given us a spirit of adoption where we can call you Abba Father, this opportunity to fellowship with you and fellowship with one another. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, the keeper of promises, the renewer of our days, the one who promised and fulfilled his promise to send the Messiah to redeem us, to save us from our sins. You did just that, and you sent Messiah Yeshua. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sent the Messiah, Messiah Yeshua, who came to teach us and fulfill the promise that when Messiah would come, he would teach us how to walk and to live the Torah, how to walk in righteousness. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, because Messiah Yeshua did just that, and he taught us that true righteousness begins first in the heart. And that if you clean the inside of the cup first, the outside would be cleansed as well. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who will send the Messiah again very soon. And he will take his rightful place on the throne of David in Jerusalem and establish your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And at long last, not only Jerusalem, Israel, but the whole world will finally enjoy true peace on earth and goodwill to all men. As we enter into your courts with thanksgiving and with praise, Lord, we remember the scripture from Exodus, what you said actually happened at that point at Mount Sinai. And you said, and Moses went up to, unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, thus shall you say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed 
and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Lord, we stand here before you today, Mishkan David saying, We are committed to the Shema, to loving you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we understand that that is the secret to abiding in your presence, as the Messiah said, that in your that abiding in your presence, that we are to abide as a branch abides in the vine. And those of us who are now practicing and doing everything possible to practice this on a daily, hourly, minute by minute basis are beginning to understand what King David said, that in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore, that there is love, acceptance, healing in your presence, Lord, and nowhere else. Master of all things, ruler of Israel, we are your people, and you are our God. Teach us to follow your commandments, Lord. We praise you, and we thank you. Master of all things, ruler of Israel, we are your people, and you are our God. Teach us to We thank you, Lord. Master of all things, ruler of Israel, we are your people and you are our God. Teach us to follow, obey your commandments. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Oh, 
thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments from his mouth. Never forget who he is and who we are and his remarkable, miraculous love for each and every one of us. Praise the Lord in the highest. Praise the Lord in the heavens. Praise the Lord your God because he is worthy, worthy to be praised. Let us, let us glorify, let us magnify the Lord. Come, let us worship him in holiness, in joy, and in praise.
The joy of the Lord is our strength. His joy in us gives us strength. Further incentive for practicing the Shema and being in his presence and abiding and being obedient and pleasing him at all things. Because when God is pleased, we're all happy, right? When God is pleased, everybody's happy. Everybody smiles. Yes? I found that out. And sometimes not always the easy way. Yeah, hallelujah is right. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, the redeemer of our days. Teach us, teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may acquire a heart of wisdom because you are the keeper of promises. We praise you, we thank you, Lord. Indeed, you are the keeper of promises. Isaiah promised, you promised to the prophet Isaiah, and you delivered. You said, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace and his kingdom would never end. We praise you and we look forward. Messiah Yeshua said, your father Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. We see his day oh so close in the horizon now. Are we rejoicing in the very near now fulfillment of the promise of the return of the Messiah? We look forward to that day, Lord. We praise you and we thank you.
Isaiah wrote, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one flew, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the wing, from the taunts from afar, and he purified my lips. And they cried, holy, 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 kadosh, 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 is the Lord God of hosts, who was, who is, and who is to come.
And in that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shakes over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that makes mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppression and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them. We praise you, we thank you, Lord, as we await the return of our Messiah, our King. Who is like you unto the Lord? Who is like him? There is none. There is none else.
to someone now. Wish somebody a Shabbat Shalom. Praise him. Praise you. We thank you, Lord. Give somebody a word of encouragement, a smile, a hug.
good to praise the Lord. Very good. Thank you, honey. Beautiful. Thank you, dancers. Anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord? Besides me? The joy of the Lord is our strength. King David said, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And thank you, Esther, for for leading us to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. In other words, it's all right to be happy in the house of the Lord. I like what the Lord said in John 15, I've told you these things that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Because I've heard people say God's not interested in us being happy. That's not true. He wants us to be joyful. He wants us to be joyful in Him. And He is a good Father. Our Father who is in heaven wants His sons and His daughters to do well. And so He is interested in every area of our life. That's why I like to study the Torah. In the Torah you see how God was interested in every area of their life. Because how many know the devil's a liar who wants to tell us, oh God doesn't care about you. Oh, God is a faraway God. No, he's a detailed God. Yeshua, the Son of God, said, even the hairs on your head are numbered. So don't shave your head because then he won't be able to remember. But even, it, oh, that's, there you go. You made his job easy. Roger's like waving. It's all right. You made his job easy. You don't have to count. <laughs> but anyway, he's interested in every detail about our life. He told Jeremiah the prophet, I, I watched you being formed in your mother's womb. I know every little detail. How many know he knows every little detail about every single one of us? Every little detail. And the Bible says we are naked before him. So... In other words, time to get real with God. You can run, but you can't hide. And if, if we get real with God, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Is He a forgiving God? Is He a merciful God? Amen. And to cleanse us. Not only does He forgive, he wants to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, he wants to take out of your life and my life what is ruining our lives. That'll make you happy. That'll, that'll make you joyful. Because he was sinless. In other words, when you, you and I follow him, we sin less. I don't want to say sinless because people get nervous. But is it all right to sin less? And be blessed more. Because if you sin less, you'll do much better. Yay or nay? Right, Mickey? Yeah. Thanks. Thank God for Mickey being here so I can pick on him. I miss you when you're not there. So praise God. We sin less and less and less. And we get blessed more and more and more. And the Bible says we're supposed to go from glory to glory. And we're supposed to be conformed into his image. And his likeness. And so we're all, we're all on, the same, on the same straight and narrow road, as he said, that leads to life. And we're to encourage each other. We're to exhort one another. Not to tear each other down, but to exhort one another. To love. And his works are what the Bible calls good works. His works. Whatever he tells you to do, do. As people say, God told me to do this. Great, do it. As long as it's biblical. If God told you to do it, do it. If God told you not to do it, don't do it. Amen? I like what he told me. He told me, love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He said, start there. I said, what about the rest, Lord? He said, don't worry about the rest. Because if you don't make connection with the living God that you invited him to your life, if you don't make a personal con connection with him, what's the difference all the other laws and commandments? And uh, 
once you have that and once you start walking that way and the joy of the Lord is your strength and you're in the anointing and you learn how to walk in the anointing and you learn how to communicate with God and God could communicate with you, then you will run away from religion. You'll be allergic to religion and you'll be addicted to a relationship with a real God. And you will understand all the things that the Son of God taught and why he taught them and why he did them. And uh, it'll, it'll rock your world. It will change your world. It changed my world. And uh, I'm happy you changed my world. Aren't, aren't you happy you let him in and he changed your world? And we think differently and we act differently and we look at things differently. And uh, praise God that we're, all, we're able to overcome all the things that are here in this world that usually get the better of people. And uh, praise God that we can brag about God, all the things that he's done for us, and we could extend a hand to you know, other people and say, listen, would you like to experience the love of God instead of saying you're going to hell? That doesn't get a lot of people. You're going to hell. And they'll tell you, I'm already there. <laughs> Would you like to experience the love of God? Yeah. And this is, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Because, because the most of human pain is because we don't do what God says. And this week's Torah portion happens to be the Ten Commandments. Not the Ten Suggestions. The Ten Commandments, and we'll, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what happened to Israel in the Ten Commandments and what's going on in modern times with the Ten Commandments and, and, and if God really wants us to keep His commandments or doesn't. We'll answer that today. Inquiring minds want to know. But anyway, announcements. Nothing really going on, right? March. March will be um, Purim, but not till March... 17th, Erev Purim will be on a Wednesday night. So it will be March 16th, we'll, we'll celebrate Purim. And how do we celebrate Purim? We read the book of Esther, all of the book of Esther, and we dress up as biblical characters of the book of Esther. I remember one year a person dressed up as a Unabomber, and I said, that's not in the book of Esther. And he brought his little chihuahua, and dressed him up as something. I don't remember. It was cute, but I think the Chihuahua was carrying the, the, the Unabomber's bomb. So he was being silly. But it is a time to dress up as biblical characters and, and praise the heroes of the book of Esther and boo the, the, uh, the villain of the book of Esther, Haman or Haman, Hamman. We boo him and we praise Esther and we praise Mordechai and we read all of the ten chapters of the book of Esther and we have a good time and we make hamantashen. It's either Haman's ears or Haman's hats. So we make special cookies for that night. My wife makes some wonderful cookies and we have a wonderful time and we enjoy in the Lord. Um, if, you're, if you're too religious, don't come. Because we're going to get silly that night, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to laugh, and we're going to enjoy and rejoice in the Lord. So, you know, if you're too religious, don't please stay home. If you can't loosen up in the Lord, if you can't chill, if you can't chillax, like my Jamaican brothers and sisters say, chillaxing. If you can't chillax, chillax at home. But anyway, and I encourage you, and then when we have prizes... We have best prizes for best costume. No, we just have drawing. But in order to, to qualify for the drawing, you got to dress up. Yeah, so don't like tie a tie to your head or something, you know, just to get it. So you got time. You got time to get a real costume together. Get a real one. Yeah, don't put like a, like, like a towel on your head and walk in, you know. <laughs> don't improvise. But anyway, the Doobie Report from, uh, from Israel, update number 30, 
31, 31 weeks that we're getting updates from Doobie. Let's, let's watch. Shalom Mishkan David partners with Israel and welcome, welcome to our weekly updates. You're about to watch this week's update, what's happening in Israel, what's happening in the spirit. So you be educated and you'll know how to wage war against the enemies and how to pray and what to pray about. So if you're not yet a partner with Israel, please go into our MishkanDavid.org website. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see Gift to Israel. Just click on that link over there and become a sustainable partner of Israel. With $18 a month or increments of $18, you can make a huge impact in Israel, help people, support lives, and really, really make a difference. So please go to mishkandavid.org, click on the Israel link, and become a sustainable partner. Now, go to the video. Shalom Mishkanite, Shalom Israel partners, and welcome to our weekly report. And here I am holding these beautiful fruits of the land because we just celebrated Tu Bishvat, this beautiful Arbor Day, and the holy day that is so amazing for us when we are eating all these different fruits of the land, just like God commanded us. And, and we, we remember the Torah portion of this week that is actually the Torah portion that comes right after Beshalach, and it's called Jetro. Jethro Yitro, this is the father-in-law of Moses. He comes to the desert. You know, Israel just crossed the Red Sea. Uh, the Egyptians drowned. Uh, Israel defeated the Midianites. And now they are getting ready to receive the Torah, these beautiful five books of Moses that we know that this is the code and the beautiful law for the people of Israel where it's written how to celebrate in the land, to grow the fruits and everything. People are getting ready to receive the Torah and later on to enter into the promised land. And this is when Jethro comes over to bring Zipporah, the wife of Moses, with his two sons. And they're coming to visit Moses and Jethro is devastated. He's seeing how busy is Moses uh, the toll that he has to pay in his personal life, that every deal, every affair, every judgment, every case comes to him to, to decide. He doesn't have nor a day, not a night. He's too busy. He doesn't have even a little bit of time. And Jethro, probably the first political advisor of Moses, comes and tells him, Moses, you cannot run the whole show alone. Soon you're going to enter with your people into the promised land. He doesn't know what what happens, you know, he's not, he doesn't know that eventually Moses is not entering, but he's saying, when you're going to enter into the land, all the different tribes are going to be scattered in all th different areas. How can you divide yourself to 12 tribes to go around and do all the cases and solve all the problems? You need to put people into their positions. You need to get lawyers and you need to get judges and you need to get police officers and soldiers and commanders. You need to build up a social political structure for people that are righteous, that loves God, that loves you, love the people of Israel, and not touching any bribery, people that you know for sure that they are righteous to help you out, judge the different affairs, judge the rest of the people of Israel. You cannot manage everything on your own. And this is an important this is an important piece of our weekly report because I want to connect this and of course we know that this is also the Torah portion when Moses brings the five books and and the Ten Commandments and and gets all the laws for the people of Israel but we're gonna deal with that some other time the important thing that I want to connect to the current events in Israel is the fact that Moses laid the foundation for for the legal system for the judges for for the police officers and it's connected to what's happening right now, nowadays in Israel. We're talking about Benjamin Netanyahu, our beloved uh, former prime minister, who's been really judged by the media and by the people, and so many people didn't even vote for him, and, and they, they delegitimized his, his uh, 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 prime ministry because they said that he took bribery and he's, he's uh, uh, 
you know, is not innocent and he had to be blamed uh, in all different kind of cases. And this, this judgment takes so long. His case is in the court for so long. And, and, you know, for the people, for the general attorney, it's not a problem. They have people working on a salary. Uh, they bring one more witness and another witness and more witnesses. And, and, uh, but Benjamin Netanyahu needs to hire lawyers, attorneys, for, for, you know, in the private sector to help him out. He's running out of money. He's running out of time. Even the people of Israel are trying to donate money and, and, and raise money for him to help him defend himself. But it doesn't make sense. And we're hearing this week that he's probably about to sign a plea deal with the Attorney General. And I'm saying, you know, please, God, it's about time to finish this saga, to finish this story, to bring justice to, you know, even if he wants to, plead, I don't know, claim that he's guilty or something, let him sign this deal because it's enough. He's already 73 years old. It's too much. I want him to go back home to enjoy the time with family or if he's going to be, a, I don't know, exempted or something to return, please God, and to lead the people of Israel. But it cannot continue like this. And therefore, I'm begging you to pray together with us for God's way to prevail, for justice to, to occur, for Benjamin Netanyahu to finish this saga of him being going back and forth into court and all the uh, uh, all the media that hates him celebrates on the blood enough is enough let him sign a plea deal let him bring his word forward let's the judges the judges of Israel that are righteous judges and true people let them make the right decision and finish this case and let us see what's happening beyond that veil I, I hope that you like this, uh, you know, special uh, uh, reports that we're bringing you. We want you, please, to stay with us, tuned with us, stay, stay partners with us. And those of you who are not yet partners, please click on the right banner and become sustainable partners with Mishkan David and with Israel. Because as you've seen already, we have sown money into Israel in your in your stake your money we help the Golani Brigade we keep on helping them and we'll continue to help them but we want to find another we want to find another project right now and what I was thinking about because it is Ptubishvat and the Arbor Day and you have seen last week uh, what happens here with the enemies of Israel are setting fire into our forest I was thinking to raise money together with you and plant a grove in Israel, maybe Mishkan David Grove, and we will return the green and the new and renovation to the land of Israel, and we will show our enemies that they cannot burn us out, and they cannot kick us out of our land, and we are going to stay here and settle. So I hope that you would like to join this project together with us. Let's plant a beautiful grove, so when you come to visit Israel, and I know that you're thinking about this, and Rabbi and Esther are planning another trip to Israel, I want you to be able either to plant trees as, as well together with us but also visit your grove so what do you say join us become partners a weekly a monthly partner together with us and if you want to give a one-time gift you can do that as well so here i am shabbat shalom i love you and i see you soon Duby. thank you Duby. Um, that's a good idea to plant the Mishkan forest. And yes, we're checking on, on the... Uh, Israel is now open for tourism with lots of restrictions. Vaccinations, examinations. And so we're not quite there. We're going to wait till, until different countries start to take the attitude. I don't know if you read about England opening up and just deciding we're, we're, we're going to try to go back to normal. And if you're sick, stay home, and we're going to open our borders up. And so we're hoping that Israel will take the same tact, and many countries will do that and open their borders and open their airports and stop this, you know, uh, th this pandemic paranoia that, uh, that's all over the world, this, this spirit of fear that is taking hold of people and 
shutting down economies and everything else. So we're, I, I, believe we're, I, I believe this year, I'm believing this year for Israel to open up freely for tourism. And then as soon as we hear that, of course, we'll start planning our next trip to Israel. I mean, how many people missed going to Israel in the last couple of years? So you should be saving up your money, right? In other words, you should have twice as much saved up because we were not able to go for the last two years. So don't spend it. Keep saving it, and so we'll be ready. When, when they open, we'll be ready, and we'll put a group together, and we'll, and we'll go back again to the land and uh, either pr- plant our own trees there. That would be nice, right? Or see the little the little seedlings that, w- that we're going to start out. I mean, that's, that's a great idea. That's, that's a wonderful idea because the enemies of Israel have, are trying to burn down their forest, and, and, they, and they send over balloons over the border with, with, with fire. I mean, it's just nasty stuff that, you know, destructive. I mean, the adversary only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we know that's just demonic activity of the enemies of Israel. So we're praying for Israel. We're supporting Israel. We're supporting the Galani uh, Brigade. We should show that every week, that, that little clip. We should show it every week on, on, on the screen because the Golani Brigade is at thanking us personally for making a donation to them of equipment and everything else. So praise God for our support uh, for Israel. And if you, if you wish to support and, and support Israel, we have on our website, you go to mishkandavid.org. There's a mishkandavid.com. That's not us. There's some, some other congregation not affiliated with us. They stole our name copied our name. I guess that's a compliment. And, and they're mishkandavid.com. We're mishkandavid.org and we're here in South Florida. And you'll find, you'll find the donate button for supporting Israel or to support the Mishkan online. Praise God for all our brothers and sisters that are online watching us live. Praise God for the live broadcast and that you are members, virtual members of, of Mishkan David, you know, and thank you, and thank everyone that is also on the internet that is supporting not only Israel, but supporting the Mishkan. Praise God. As Esther has said, we, we survive solely on, on donations from, from our brothers and sisters that are supporting this congregation that God has put in their heart. And um, so praise God. I thank everyone that is supporting Israel and supporting the Mishkan. And uh, that's it, right? Everybody love the Word of God? If you don't mind standing up, we're going to honor the Lord. T-Square is going to carry the, the, the Torah and, and share a little bit of testimony. Praise God for T. Is he doing wonderful as assistant rabbi? Amen. The song that we are singing is the song that the children of Israel sang when they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. It is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 11. In Hebrew, Micha Mocha. In English, who is like thee, O Lord? And of course, the answer is, there is none else.
And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For the law of the Torah was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua, HaMashiach. Baruch Hashem, blessed be His holy name. Baruch Ababa Shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And when the ark was removed, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate you flee from you. And the seventy disciples of Yeshua returned, saying, Lord, even the unclean spirits are subject unto us through your holy name. Arise, O Lord, here this morning. Let your enemies be scattered. Let every assignment of the enemy be broken. This instant, in the name of Yeshua, every assignment against us individually, against our families, against the congregation of the living God, in the name of Yeshua, commanded out of this place. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, fill every vessel here this morning with your love, with your joy, with your shalom, with your peace that surpasses all understanding. And Father God, as we rejoice in our Names written in heaven, your spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are your sons and we are your daughters. Father God, we ask humbly that you draw our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors. We even pray for and bless our enemies here this morning. Father God, draw them to yourself as you did for us. Let their names be written in heaven. Let them taste and see that you are good and Father God, as we look around this room, there are brothers and sisters that are not here today for whatever reason. Father God, that you would touch them wherever they are, that you would set the captives free, heal them, restore them physically, spiritually. Let them come to your house. Let them brag about you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua to us. And Father God, we thank you and praise you for every single thing that has happened in our lives to this very moment, to this day. Because your word declares that all things work together. Thank you, T. Work together for the good. Because we love you and because, Father in heaven, you have called us for your purpose. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your purpose in each and every one of our lives. To conform us into the image of your Son, our Messiah, our Savior, our King, our Lord, in His name we pray this morning, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the name Yeshua HaMashiach in Hebrew. The world knows Him as Jesus the Christ. In His name we pray this morning. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Please remain standing. We're going to honor the Lord for not just the first five books of our Bible, which is what the Torah is from Genesis through Deuteronomy. Thank you for carrying the Torah. Thank you for being the representation where two or three are gathered, the Lord said, in His name. Are we gathered in His name? He said, there am I in the midst of them. Is He here? Somebody bear a witness that the Lord is here with us. It is a peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't you wish you could can it? You'd be rich. We could sell it. Better than Mountain Dew. It'll tickle your innards. That's what they say about Mountain Dew. But anyway, the Lord is here and here with us. And we honor him as a Messianic congregation, not just for the first five books of our Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we study the entire Bible not to go backwards, but to go forward in him. So that we don't make the same mistakes of those that have gone before us. And we understand clearly how to walk the way he walked in this world. We're to be conformed in his image and his likeness. We're to be like him. And, and praise God that God has put Jewish people together with non-Jewish people and given us the same assignment, the same goal, the same purpose. And not only are we gathered in his name, we come in agreement. We all come in agreement. How many people agree on him? And how many of people agree on the first and great commandment that he commanded? Every single one of us were to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when we do that, there is power. There is anointing. There is Holy Spirit power. I'm getting the Holy Spirit rush right now. 
flowing through my legs. And I can feel it's like a wind. Awesome. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for Yeshua. Thank you for invading every bit of oppression here today, every darkness, every demonic stronghold. We command every unclean spirit out of this place in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Father, fill this place with your light and inv invade every bit of darkness with your light. Oh, hallelujah. I love it. I love this. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Now, if we could put up the uh, prayers, we'd be doing great. Here we go. My name is Aliyah, by the way. Barku et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachabanu Mikol Hoamim. Benatan Lanu Et Orato. Baruch Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. And we said together, please. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all peoples, given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. We have a new and better covenant as we do the new covenant blessing. First in Hebrew, then in English, together, please. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natalanu, Mashiach, Yeshua, v'hadi bro chalabri kadasha, Baruch atah Adonai, notein habrit kadasha. Amen. We said, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. covenant. Amen. Please give the Lord a big hand for all of his words. My lovely wife Esther is going to come up and share a few words or a few verses from this week's Torah portion. Yitro, which of course in the Hebrew language there's no J. So it's Yitro, which is Jethro. And, uh, and this week's Torah portion, and what, what are you going to chant? Exodus 18, 1 through 8. Please come up T-square, because when someone speaks in an unknown tongue, let there be a T-square. So you're going to give us the translation, and then you're going to remain up here, and you're going to share some testimony whatever the Lord puts on your heart. And I just want to say again, you're doing a wonderful job as the assistant rabbi. And so is Juliet. Amen. You guys are doing a wonderful job. And I just want to praise God for the two of you for being here with us. You're doing a good job too, honey. She's been doing For those of you who didn't catch that, he said, you're doing a good job too, honey. And then he walked by, by uh, T and he said, she has to. She has to. <laughs> <laughs> said the contract. Uh, the legalities of this. I got to talk to Joan. Um, yes, uh, this morning uh, I'm going to be reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8 from the portion entitled Yitro, Jethro. Um, I want to also encourage you. I have the, uh, on my cell phone, I have the calendar for the Torah portion. So if you'd like to uh, carry the Torah and perhaps if the Lord put on your heart to share a, a testimony or a, a praise report, which is really what, you know, testimony should really be all about is giving praise to the Lord, um, you know, you're welcome to do that. Just come and see me, and I'll find a time slot for you, and then you can participate. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions from people that tune in online, just to let you know, because a couple of people have already, twice I've gotten some emails about people who want to send in their testimony by way of YouTube. And I, I, I want to just let you know, um, sadly, 
that's not the purpose of, of this. This is um, giving testimony is a courtesy that Rabbi Gabe confers on people who carry the Torah portion. And it's predicated on you being here and carrying the Torah and actually reading the Torah because that, that's actually very important. So it's, it's more about that than it is about you. So unfortunately, no, uh, you cannot phone it in or send it in online, okay, sadly. Um, so anyway, but if you would like to carry the Torah, if you're in town and you come and worship with us, you'd like to carry the Torah, absolutely, just let me know, okay? All right, Exodus chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, uh, Yitro. Vayishma ha-yitro hochen midyan choten Moshe et kol asher asa ha-elohim el Moshe o le-Israel amor ki hotzi Adonai Israel mimitraim vayikra yitro kochten Moshe tzipor eshet Moshe achad shilucheicha ve-et shnei vaneicha Asher Shem Ha'echad Gershon Ki Amar Gerhaiti Be'eretz Nochria Veshem Ha'echad Eliezer Ki Elohei Avi Be'etri Vayatzileni Merene Paro Vayavo Yitro Choten Moshe When Yitro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Yitro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the God of my father said, He was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Yitro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Yitro, am come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord delivered them. This is the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Good afternoon, family. One uh, little thing that I want to share really quick that I think is really cool is if you know me well enough, you, or if I've shared with you, you know previously before the Lord I was a man of science. And so, you know, it always makes me laugh when Gabe was like, inquiring minds want to know because I analyze everything and I want to ask all the questions. But we're amazingly blessed by the fact that the Rebbitson uh, chants this for us every week. And I say that not only appreciative of her, but the science behind that is that the Hebrew language, many of you may not know, but several languages around the world, especially ones that are close in terms of you know, pronunciation and background, they all produce similar frequencies. 
geography and science. So like all the Latin-based languages, English, Spanish, French, you know, Italian, Portuguese, they all produce a similar frequency, even though the language is slightly different. But Hebrew is the only language in the world with a unique frequency. So we are literally hearing something that is unrepeatable outside this room, except by other people doing the same exact thing that she is doing. So I think that's really, really cool. And God bless you, Esther. Thank you so much for giving us that gift, that unique sound that cannot be produced anywhere else. And so we are very blessed for our Rebbitzin to be able to do that for us. Um, but aside from that, a little sidebar, uh, if you are tired of seeing my face up here, carry the Torah. <laughs> the only reason why I carry the Torah is when there's no one on the list. So we encourage you. I'm telling you, it is a blessing. It is a wonderful blessing um, because when you realize that this is a representation of Messiah Yeshua and to carry him around the room is, is, is a very beautiful picture. But, um, you know, as when Rabbi Gabe again surprised me this morning and said, there's no one, you know, you're up. I was like, okay, I was, Lord, what do you want me to share? And um, the Lord wanted me to share about the power of the mind about how so very important uh, the reason why Messiah Yeshua said all of our mind um, is because for me specifically, I, I came into the kingdom with a broken mind. My mind was broken, and so part of my journey of restoration was the Lord restoring my sanity to me. Um, but now that my sanity has been restored, now I'm starting to be able to learn the deep dive, the intricacies, and the power of the mind, especially the power of the mind on the Lord, and how uh, truly learning the ability through Him to control the traffic that goes on in here is so very important. I almost want to say life and death in the spirit, I feel like, can be controlled in the mind. How you're thinking, what you're thinking, when you're thinking, why you're thinking, all of these things, it, it really... Um, cuts out a specific type of walk that we have to share. And uh, for myself, the Lord put on my heart that there are many people here today that are having problems controlling the mind. And um, I tend to be very forthright with my shortcomings. Um, you know, the only reason I'm up here is maybe I, you know, um, took some of the concepts and ran with it just a little bit faster than some other people, but specifically my mind, um, because it was so troubled, um, you know, I really had to pour in my focus on putting my mind on the Lord and really exhibiting what it says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, when you put your mind on Him, you will have perfect peace. And um, the way that I can tell you that the Lord showed me how to control the mind is by using the tool of fasting. Um, you know, there are not enough of us that are making fasting a regular part of your life. It is not something that should be special or done on occasion. Really, if you want to be in the Spirit, if Messiah Yeshua set the standard and the first thing He did was fast for 40 days... We need to check ourselves because there are many believers that they don't fast after 40 years of being saved. They haven't fasted once. <laughs> and it's funny, but it's sad, truly. Um, I don't care to talk about how many times I've fasted or for how long because, you know, that's between me and the Lord. If you know, you know. Um, but I can tell you that after six years, I am well approaching, you know, past double-digit numbers. I'm you know, because fasting has to be a regular part of your walk. Because dying to yourself and really allowing the Lord to take control of your mind can only be done when you're not worried about the things in this world. And the only way to not be worried about the things of this world is if you fast. You have to fast. I'm sorry to tell you, I love you, but if you're not fasting, you will reach a ceiling. There is a ceiling in your walk because that you're taking that faith knowing that depriving yourself of life 
So that's what it is. We need food to survive. When he said, die to yourselves, find who you give up your life, your life is found in him. That's not just living your life by him. It's literally you're giving up your life force by eliminating solid foods. I know there's different kinds of fasts and fasting from this and fasting from that. But I'm telling you, unless you start learning how to fast with liquid only, whether it be juice or water, obviously the water fast is going to be the most powerful fast. That is the fast that has helped me tremendously on my walk. But until you start fasting, you will have trouble with your mind. And I'm not telling you to put that down. I'm not telling you, you know, you're never going to make it. But until you really start taking fasting seriously, you will reach a plateau. Because Messiah Yeshua set the standard and he said there are some things that only come out by prayer and fasting. And we all have strongholds, each and every single one of us. And I can tell you that the way that my mind was restored and the way that he has shown me the power of the mind, allowing thoughts to retain in your head, allowing the devil to implant ideas. I never understood. It used to always make me very upset. When Rabbi Gabe would talk about taking every thought captive, I'm like, you're insane. It's impossible. I cannot control the traffic in here. You know, I'm a thinker. I'm an analyzer. I'm always asking questions. You know, the scientific method, you know, forming my hypothesis, testing the hypothesis, whether it's a theory. And if it's wrong, I go back to forming another. So it's like all these things, just continuous traffic and the thoughts of the adversary, your own thoughts, and then discerning the voice of the Lord. I'm telling you that I love you, but you will only be able to reach that point of power in your mind through Messiah Yeshua if you start fasting. And so that's all I have to say today. The Lord told me that to tell you the people who are having trouble with their mind, and even if you're not, you have to start fasting and you have to start taking fasting seriously. I love you all. Thank you, T. That truly was a word in season. Thank you so much for, for showing us that, that worship and that, that are having our minds, hearts, and souls on the Lord. There's an actual physiology behind it. Right. And if any of you were just impressed with, with the wisdom that the Lord is giving this young man, I, I would encourage you to sit down and talk to him about a subject called neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. And he'll be happy to share what, what he knows, the, the power of spirituality and what it does to the mind. It's amazing. So we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for giving us uh, his Torah, the leaves from the tree of life, for our healing, for the healing of the nations. We say, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natalanu Torah emet, v'chaye olam nata betocheinu. Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha-Torah, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth, implanting within us everlasting life. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Thank you, honey. Thank you, T. You're a honey also. And uh, what should happen when we hear the Word of God? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And that's one of my favorite scriptures in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Those that come to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Thanks for sharing about fasting. If you've never fasted before, this is what I recommend. Fasting is like physical exercise. If you haven't done physical exercise, you're not going to be able to run a marathon. You start out slowly. And what I have recommended is if you would like to experience fasting and, 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 and reaching out to the Lord in a fasting state, is to begin, for example, if you come to a Saturday morning meeting that starts at 11, not to have breakfast and not to put solid food in your stomach before the service. As you know, we always have food after the service, so you're not going to starve 
you're not going to die. And just to be able to have liquids and start out that way, fast before the service, break your fast after the service. And uh, if you come on the Friday night, don't have dinner before you come to the service. Maybe just have lunch. If you can last the whole day, wonderful. But after lunch, don't eat, don't have dinner. Come here, come to the Friday night service and then break your fast after the service and begin this way to start fasting and praying and walking differently uh, in your life. I mean, it really, I mean, I, I bear witness to what T is saying that over the years, many, many of the, the strides and the, the, the advancement that I had spiritually had to do with fasting. And usually the Holy Spirit, once you're open to it, the Holy Spirit will lead you to, to do fasting and will tell you how many days and we'll tell you how to start. I remember when I first started, the Holy Spirit had me fast one day, a, a, a few one-day fasts, then three days, then seven days, then 10 days, then 14 days, then up to three weeks of fasting. And uh, tremendous, tremendous. It's really, it draws us closer to our goal, of course, to be in the Spirit. And, and, and if you deny your flesh, if you crucify the flesh, then you find out the power of God, the power of connecting with the Holy Spirit, the power that's within each and every one of us. And that's the challenge for each born-again believer is not only to have the Holy Spirit, not only to be saved, but to connect with God and, and, and stay connected to God. Because Yeshua, I quote this all the time in John 15, talked about a permanent connection not just a once in a while connection because he described, he said, he said, I'm the true vine and you are the branches. And he said, branches do what with trees or plants? Branches abide and get everything, nutrition, energy, everything comes from the tree trunk and every branch that does not abide in the, in the, in the vine withers and is weak. And many believers do not understand this. And that's why we get a lot of different doctrines that are out there and a lot of failures. And, and, and our Father who is in heaven does not want us to fail. He did not send a failing son into the world. He sent a conquering person. He sent a person who said, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, Yeshua, the Son of God, overcoming the world on our behalf is wonderful. But if we don't overcome in this world, it's a tragedy. It's not a blessing not to overcome. In the, it's, it, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a problem that the world, the things that are happening in the world and the things that we're exposed to are overcoming us. What is the good news about that? Because that's what I was taught when I first became a believer, that Yeshua overcame in the world and because he overcame, somehow through osmosis, somehow through believing that he overcame, that I was going to overcome. And it didn't happen. And so it, 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 it's, it, I, I began to analyze like you, and I began to question. If something works, wonderful. If something doesn't work, it doesn't work. And what is the problem? And how many know God's never the problem? God's never the problem. It's always us. And so many of us try to question God. It's not... We don't need to question him. He knows what he's doing. We're the ones that need to learn. We're the ones that need to understand. And we're the ones that need knowledge and wisdom. That's, and I'll never forget this. Solomon didn't ask for, for things, didn't ask for material things. He asked for knowledge and wisdom. And because he wanted to know things from God and to get revelation, God was so impressed with, with Solomon, he made him the richest person on the planet. He blessed them because he didn't ask them for material things. And most people always asking God for material things. Ask for knowledge and wisdom because knowledge and wisdom is more precious, is more valuable than gold and silver. And, and you'll be like Solomon. God will be so impressed with you. I found another son or daughter that's not asking me for, to increase their allowance. And God will bless you as a result of that. And, and knowledge and wisdom is so powerful because there's so many doctrines out there today um, that it can be very confusing. And, uh, and, and, and winds of doctrine take you in different directions and not always in a good direction. 
And Yeshua said, I'm the right direction. I'm the way. I'm the truth, and I am the life. And this week's Torah portion is extremely important because not only does it cover, it starts with Yitro, Jethro, which is Moses' father-in-law, and he does tell Moses, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna wear out. There's too much, you're, 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 you're helping people, you're judging between people and situations and problems. You're leading two million people by yourself. He gives them a wonderful uh, recommendation. He tells them, lay hands on, on, on 70 elders, let them judge the smaller things, and you be the Supreme Court. You, be the, you, be the, you, you take on the hard problems and delegate. So, so Jethro comes up with a wonderful idea. But the most powerful part of this week's Torah portion is God giving the nation of Israel the Ten Commandments. That's the power. That's, that's what's going on. And, and, and in case you didn't know, that the Ten Commandments were given after the 49th day of them coming out of Egypt. What is so important about that? Because basically, it's called the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, that God has the nation of Israel to celebrate, to count 47 Sabbaths plus one day after uh, Passover, which Pentecost, the word Pentecost in English that most of the church is familiar with, is the number 50. That on, on the 50th day, of after every Passover, one day after seven Sabbaths, is the Feast of Weeks. Now what's so powerful is that on the first Pentecost, God gives the commandments, of, uh, the commandments to the nation of Israel. Now what happens in the New Covenant, in Acts chapter 2? It says it was the Feast of Pentecost, and then the Holy Spirit is given on the same day. So what is God trying to tell us? That the Holy Spirit now... Now the Holy Spirit replaces the commandments of God? Or does he give us both on the same day? Should we combine them together is the question. Should we separate them? Is that the message? Or should we combine them together? That God now has given us the commandments of God that Israel could not keep. Because if you read the Torah portion for this week and the, and the chapters that we're reading, we are reading... Exodus chapter 18, beginning in verse 1 through chapter 23 and verse 26. And so we're reading five chapters usually a week. And in this week's Torah portion, we now have chapter 20, which is the Ten Commandments, given on Pentecost. Now under the New Covenant, Acts chapter 2, it says the 120 disciples, if you remember a very famous passage in the Bible, we're in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit is given to the 120 disciples in the upper room. Now the question is, the people that now, that now have the Holy Spirit and go forward begin to say, we don't need to keep the commandments of God. And the people that keep the commandments of God, they go forward and saying, we don't need Jesus. We don't need Yeshua. So we now have a split between those that receive the Holy Spirit and those that receive the commandments of God, and that's Judaism today and most of Christianity today, if we can be honest, and we can say amen. That's what's going on. Is that what God wanted? He wanted, he wanted the people that kept the Torah to forget about the Holy Spirit, reject Jesus, and the people that accept to Jesus forget the commandments of God. And the Bible says a house divided shall not stand. If God gave the commandments on Pentecost and the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, he was trying to tell us, when you put those things together, you have dynamite, you have dunamis in Greek, you have power, you have, you have Holy Spirit power, and you have now the power to keep his commandments. Because the problem is, with most believers is, the, the things I want to do, Romans chapter 7, Paul says, these, this is what's going on. The things I want to do, it's like you were saying about controlling your mind. The things I want to do, I'm not able to do. The things I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. And Romans chapter 7, Paul talks about the struggle within each human being between our spirit and between our flesh. Because we are not one-dimensional beings. We are bi-dimensional beings. We are spiritual beings inside of these te temporary physical bodies. Once you understand that, you'll understand why there's a battle between the soul, between the spirit, 
between the person that's living inside this body and our physical bodies. And every person, even though you're born again, you still have that struggle. And once you understand what the struggle is about and how to conquer it, because what did T bring up? You want to conquer this, this battle is to fast and to weaken the flesh to make the spirit man stronger. Because if your flesh controls you, think about this. If your flesh controls your spirit, if your temporary body controls your eternal spirit, you're in trouble. You will do things you don't want to do. Amen. If you can't say amen, say oh me. It means you're out of control. Like people say, I'm out of control. Is that good? And I, I didn't mean to do that. Well, you just ruined my life. What do you mean you didn't mean to do it? I am sorry. Or you ruin your own life. Or your health. Or whatever it is that you do. You don't want to do this. And it's, is it, is it, it, I mean, and if you apologize a hundred times, does that make any difference? If you keep doing the same things over and over, it's insanity. And the Lord didn't come into this world for us to stay insane or to, or to do crazy things. Yeshua had his act together. And if we're to be conformed in his image and likeness, we're going to have our act together. In other words, we have a good message. We have a message of overcoming in this world, not being overcome in the world. When I was overcome, I was miserable. Now that the Lord has taught me how to overcome and how to do it, now life is completely different. I am of good cheer. Not only is he of good cheer, because he overcame, it's like he's taught me how to overcome, and I'm happy now. Because is it any fun to, to fail continuously as a human being? It's no fun. I mean, that's, that's not good news, that you're failing spiritually and you're failing physically. Is that, is that good news? That's not good news. I like to brag about God. My soul's doing great. My physical body's doing great. I'm 67 years old. I take no medications. That's something to brag about. Yeah. Did I start out that way? No. When I walked in, I suffered with 10 years of an ulcerative colitis. I went to the best gastroenterologist, University of Miami professors, and he said, I can't help you. Oh, wonderful. Now where to? I'm an atheist. If a doctor can't help me. And suffered with this condition from 26 years old to 36 years old. Ten years of solid misery of that I couldn't even eat. Everything I ate burned. Everything I ate cramped me up. I couldn't even enjoy a meal for ten years. In my youth. Imagine having to live like that for the rest of your life. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the commandments of God. Thank God for the way, the truth, and the life. Thank God for the great physician. And that's why I'm standing here every week. Because I've said this before. I did not think that God could heal me. I didn't think God loved me that much. I didn't think that healing was a reality in, in, you know, for people because we did what God said. And I said to the Lord, I said, if you restore me, I will serve you. Not thinking that I would be restored, because I went to the best doctors. University of Miami. Top-notch people. I had to know somebody to get even an appointment with this person. Told me, I can't help you. Wonderful. I said, God, can you help me? God, are you real? God, are you in the restoration business? God, are you still in the miracle business? God, can you really heal like the Bible says? Because if you restore me, I will serve you. And when he restored me, he reminded me of what I promised. And he said, I want you to get up there now. I was like, did I really say that? And the Holy Spirit showed me why nobody's volunteering for the Torah portion or to carry the Torah. Because many of us are embarrassed to come up here and speak in front of everyone. Because it's not easy to get up here and face everyone and speak from your heart. I mean, I know because I started out shaking like a leaf when I started up here. And I forced myself because I said I did promise the Lord to be up here and to share the good news 
Because I, if I was not a partaker of the good news, I'm going to give you some kind of Bible study. I'm going to give you some kind of theology, something that I don't even know if it works or not. I mean, what a waste of time that would be. I'm up here because I know that I know that I know how it works. And I know how it doesn't work. And the only way it works is when you do things his way. And you need to listen to him above everybody else. Moses is a wonderful person, but Moses is not Yeshua. And go with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Let's, let's do a little reading here. Are you with me? What are you going to talk about? Him. Anyone here perfect besides Sal? He's the only perfect one, right? He is sinless. What does sinless mean? No mistakes. So if you want to major in mistakes, don't follow him. Follow somebody else. Somebody say, I like to make less mistakes. How many know mistakes are costly? Spiritually and physically. What did God say to the nation of Israel regarding sin? I want your best animals. You think it, you think it was nice when your, your, your wealth was tied to your, your animals that you owned? And every time you sinned, you had to give up one of your best of your flock? Was that costly when your wealth was measured by the flock that you had? And God said, I don't want the lame. I want the best of your flock of your wealth every time you sin and I want you to kill it in front of the priest and I want to and then I'm going to burn it they're going to burn it to the ash in other words it's going to cost you dearly sin will cost you how many know the wages of sin is death I'm all over the place here come on out book of Hebrews chapter 2 chapter 3 I lied Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Who is he? Messiah Yeshua. Verse 2, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man, this person, was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and as much as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses truly, verse 5, was faithful in all of his house as a servant for a testimony of those things were to be spoken after. But Messiah, verse 6, or Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast, the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? In other words, who deserves more glory, Moses or Yeshua? Yeshua. Who is sinless, Moses or Yeshua? Yeshua? Yeshua is sinless. We're to listen to him. Now, God gives the Ten Commandments to the nation of Israel, or the commandments of God or the law of God. He gives it through Moses. Now comes Yeshua and he says, forget the law. He didn't say that? Why are we teaching that? Are we teaching what he taught? Or we're teaching what somebody else is teaching? Well, Paul said this and Paul said that. Is Paul Jesus? Was Paul sinless? As a matter of fact, Paul was a persecutor of the church of believers, of followers of Messiah. Can I use the Pauline letters to contradict what Jesus said? You shouldn't. Because now you're negating. Now, do we want to criticize Paul? I don't want to criticize Paul. But I'm not going to elevate Paul above Jesus, and I'm not going to elevate Moses above Jesus. I'm going to elevate no one in the Bible above Yeshua, above Jesus. You can't do it because there's no one in the Bible that was sinless besides him. In other words, 
when the Bible says he's the king of righteousness, it means everyone else is not. He's the king of right. Now, the Bible consists of, standard Bible consists of 66 books. Many different writers of the Bible. But there's only one Yeshua. I'll say that again. There's only one Yeshua. There's only one sinless one. There's only one begotten of the Father given to the entire world, to Jewish people and non-Jewish people, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have eternal life. I'm here to tell you the first four years of my walk with the Lord, I tried other doctrines. What happened with those other doctrines? My health went south. My marriage went south. My business went south. Everything went south. When did your life turn around? When I started listening to him and I started doing what he said. That's when my life turned around. And I'm here to lift him up. I'm not here to lift myself up. I'm here to say, he saved me. He put me on the straight and narrow that leads to life. His doctrine is truth. And everyone else is suspect. That's what I'm here to say. It may upset some, some followers of Judaism. It may upset some followers of Islam. It may upset some followers of Christianity. I don't care if you get upset. I lived upset. I lived sick. I lived depressed. I went to the best doctors. It's like that woman that spent all of her money on doctors. Doesn't it say that in the Bible? Spent all her money. And then she heard about this rabbi in Israel who healed people. And all she did was just reach out to him. And just to get near him and just to just touch the hem of his garment. And he said, who touched me? And Peter said, there's a crowd here. What do you mean who touched you? He said, I felt virtue. I felt the anointing. I felt Holy Spirit. Somebody reached out to me and the power of God got on them because they were reaching out to me. Somebody say, time to reach out for the right one. Because it's the Spirit that gives life. The letter kills. It is the Spirit that gives life. And we are not ministers of the letter anymore. We're ministers of the Spirit. There's a big difference. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus, by Yeshua HaMashiach. In other words, you can have truth and mercy and grace as you walk in the law of Moses. Did he violate the law of Moses? Was he walking in grace and truth? You can, you can live and walk in grace and truth and not violate the laws of Moses? Is that amazing? Because most people won't tell you that. He will tell you that. Somebody say, he will tell you that. Somebody say, I'm listening. Are you listening? He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Listen to what he has to say. Because if you listen to him and you do what he says, you'll find out if it's good doctrine or bad doctrine. I've tried other people's doctrine. Did it work? No. When, when, did, God, when, did, when did your life begin to straighten out? When I listened to his doctrine and I put it into practice. In other words, when James in his, Bible, in, in, in his book says, do not be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. How do you find out if something's right? You try it. How do you find out if something's wrong? You try it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. That's why he's the king of right. So now the Ten Commandments comes through Moses, right? And they said, which you quoted, we will do what you said, God. How many people who were born again, you accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you said, God, I'm going to do what you say. And then what happened? The same thing that happened to Israel. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. And what did you say? I can't go to the Mishkan now because I can't do what God says. Only holy people are there. I can't do. I make God promises and now I can't keep his promises. And I don't understand. Does God still love me? Am I still a child of God? Yes. But are you being blessed as a result of that? 
No. No. Because God says to the nation of Israel, if you do what I tell you, that's how you get my promises. I took took you out of Egypt. I I saved you by the blood of the Lamb. All you had to do was apply the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost of your home. The angel of death passed over you. I want you to celebrate Passover every year, but 50 days later, I want you to celebrate Pentecost. And I don't want you to just celebrate the Holy Spirit. I want you to celebrate my commandments. I want you to celebrate both. Let me put Jewish people together with non-Jewish people in Messianic congregations and watch them celebrate both. And watch them say, when you put them both together, it works. When you separate them, it doesn't work. Because if you have the Ten Commandments without the Holy Spirit, you can't keep them. And if you have the Holy Spirit without the commandments, then you bark like dogs and roll over and... And speak in tongues without interpretation. Without an interpreter. I have a Honda, I have a Honda, I have a Honda. Shandai Botai. And no one understands you. And you act crazy. And you say, well, that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit without the commandments. You act cuckoo. And you do kooky things. And when you have the commandments without the Holy Spirit, you're legalistic. No one wants to be around you because, because you, feel, you make people feel like they're not good enough. And you're under pressure to keep the commandments of God. Somebody say, time to go to Yeshua, who said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn of me, for you will find rest for your soul. In other words, I'll teach you how to do this Easy peasy. I'll teach you how to do this and it won't be difficult. And you will be blessed above everybody else because I want to light you up and I want you to be salt. I want you to be like Rabbi Gabe. I want you to stand on the rooftops of your neighborhood and I want you to brag about me to all your neighbors who are who go from doctor to doctor and sickness to sickness and poverty and debt and everything else and are miserable. And I want you to shout it from the rooftops. There's somebody who came into this world to overcome in this world and I've listened to him instead of everybody else and God has changed my life. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I have the best marriage I've ever had in my life and I've had two marriages. Which, by the way, my ex-wife reminded me the other day of why my marriage was ruined. Because I was trying to teach her about the Gentile Jesus that never existed when I first got saved. Because that's what I was taught. I told her, you don't have to keep the commandments of God. Jesus did everything. And the law was nailed to the cross. And I said, we don't practice that now. We have a Torah. We keep Shabbat. She said, you never told me that. I said, I'm telling you that now. We do keep the commandments of God and we have the Holy Spirit. And Jewish people are together with non-Jewish people and it's working like it's never worked before. We're seeing miracles. We're seeing salvations. We're seeing deliverance. We're seeing people's lives change now like never before, not like Judaism and not like even typical Christianity. Does that mean there's no problems? Of course there's problems. Does that mean we never get sick? We do get sick, but we're not supposed to stay sick. And we said this last night, in him there's no sin. When you're in him, when you're in the spirit of God, when you're in the presence of God, and when you put it all together, it actually works. Amen? Amen. Matthew 5. Somebody save time to listen to Yeshua. Think not, verse 17. Think not. Don't even think about it. Somebody say, why am I thinking about it? Why am I believing the opposite of what he said? Think not that I am come to what? What's this week's Torah portion? The law. God gave the law. He says, do not think 
Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but... Now, I was taught when I first got saved, because he fulfilled the law, I didn't have to. That's the way I lived. As I got divorced, I lost my business. My car was repossessed. My daughters didn't speak to me for years. That's the doctrine that I practiced. And I stayed sick. Did that doctrine work? Not in my life. Maybe it worked in your life, but it didn't work in my life. I am a witness. In other words, I'm not teaching theology here. I'm speaking from experience. I am giving you testimony of what I went through when I, when I didn't believe verse 17, when I was taught something else, that he fulfilled it so I didn't have to. Now, if you don't read the next verses, that might hold up, Mickey. But when you go to verse 18, what does Yeshua say? For I say to you, for verily, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until what? That still holds water. What? Because it says he fulfilled it. It'll all be fulfilled. It says he will fulfill everything. We're still in agreement with that. So if we stop here, that doctrine is still good. But if you go to the next verse, that doctrine is blown out of the water. Because in verse 19, the Lord says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Whosoever. I'm Jewish. Whosoever. I am not Jewish. Whosoever. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. In other words, it's bad enough you break, now you teach other people to break. You shall be called, you shall be called wonderful counselor. The my, what are you going to be called when you, when you practice that? You shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I have already experienced what it is to be least in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, at least in the kingdom of heaven is you're saved, but nothing's going right in your life. If you can't say amen, say oh me. Because I met many brothers and sisters that are saved. Some people even question your salvation because you're not doing real well. And just, which is reasonable. It's logical. If you're not doing well and you accepted Jesus in your life, look at your life. It's terrible. And you're like, maybe I'm not saved. Maybe I should do the sinner's prayer every week. Maybe I should get saved every week to make sure I'm saved. I must have done the sinner's prayer a hundred times when I first became a believer because I was questioning my salvation because my life was questionable. Are you with me? So I'm reading this. You shall be called least in the king, but whoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I want to do your commandments, Lord. And not only do I want to do them, I want to teach them. What should I do, Lord? There's 613 commandments in your wonderful law. And there's 1,050 commandments in your new covenant. There's 1,663 laws and commandments. What's a man to do? This one says this. That one says that. What do you say, Lord? Somebody say, what do you say, Lord? Where should I start? That's how I started, Mickey, where he said to start. Where did he say to start? Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. Somebody say, time to follow Yeshua. Time to give Jesus a try. We've given everybody else a try. Somebody said, I've given everybody else a try. I gave plenty of people tries. I gave this one a try. I gave that one a try. Maybe this is okay. Maybe that's okay. It's like, wait a minute. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying. In other words, who was a lawyer in those days? They were experts in the law of God. In other words, it was a legitimate question put to them. Because 
People were following him. He was teaching. But he was not teaching the way they were teaching. So they were questioning him. They wanted to know where he was coming from. They wanted to know what he was teaching. So they asked him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said, I fulfilled the law. There is no law. You don't have to keep any laws. Did he say that? So why do we teach that? Is that what he answered, Mick? He didn't answer that. So now they ask him, and, he, and Yeshua said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. And then he says, This is. Somebody say, Time to listen to him. Time to stop listening to everybody else. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Lord, I want to please you. Lord, I want to keep your commandments. Lord, I don't want to be like Israel that promised and couldn't do it. I want to keep my word to you, Lord. I want to do what you say. How do I do this, Lord? You do it exactly as he said it, in the order that he says it. The first thing where he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Do you need a theology degree to do that? You just need to be breathing to do that. If you're still breathing, if you're still breathing, check your... That means you can do that. This is the first, verse 38, this is the first and great commandment in other words if we're going to follow him what's he actually teaching he's actually teaching us that are saved that have the holy spirit now to love him with all of our heart mind soul and strength what is he telling us connect with me within you because if you don't start out connecting with me you're going nowhere in the kingdom of god because without me you can do nothing, even if you mean well. Somebody said, I meant well. I said, God, I want to do this. I said I wanted to please him, and what did you do? You didn't please him, and you broke his commandments. So does he want that in our life? Because what happens when you break his commandments? That's the definition of sin. Does he forgive sin? Absolutely. Does he bless sin? Absolutely not. So if you enjoy being saved and not blessed, this message is not for you. Lots of people like that, Mickey. I was one of them, I know. Saved, super saved. A hundred times I must have done the sinner's prayer. I'm saved a hundred times over. Was I blessed? No. When did you start getting blessed, Gabriel? Please give us the secret. There's your secret. There's your ticket to not only salvation, there's your ticket to be blessed above everyone else on this planet. Because if you do what he said, he has to do what he promised. You don't have to beg him. You don't have to plead with him. You don't have to threaten him. I remember threatening him. Did that work? I remember complaining. Did that work? Grumbling and complaining. Does it work? He's like deaf to that. Have you noticed that? Doesn't move him. He's like a rock. So what got you started? This got me started. Because I remember listening to every wind of doctrine and trying this doctrine and trying that doctrine and forget the law, remember the law, do all 613, do all 1,653, go crazy. I mean, how many know that with the internet now, you can really go nuts? I mean, you get a little video camera, you can, you can have a ministry on the, on the internet now. And you put a Bible in front of somebody and they start teaching. And you can listen to a thousand. If there's 4,000 different denominations, now there's 40 zillion people on the internet talking stuff. Somebody say, time to listen to him over everybody else. In other words, get rid of that noise that's in your mind. Get rid of the noise that you heard from before, whoever you heard it from. 
bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, of Messiah. What are you doing? Where am I starting? Where do I start this wonderful walk in Jesus? There's so many instructions. There's so many instructors where he said to start. What do I do? You start focusing on God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Can anybody do this? Do you need a college degree? Do you need theology? I, I've, never, I've never done this before. Yes, you have. You did it with money. You did it with drugs. You did it with sex. You did it with people. You love somebody with all your heart. Oh, baby, I love you with all my heart. My, I can't get enough of you, baby. <laughs> and baby's going, I don't even like you. You broke my heart, baby. It's all right. You're not the only one. My middle name is Heartbreaker. So you've done it before. You just never did it with the right one. Time to do it with the right one. Who will never break your heart. Who will never drive you crazy. Who will never sap your soul who won't steal and kill from you, who will bring everything back that the enemy stole. He will love you back like you've never been loved before. Because he is perfect love. You will experience perfect love for the first time in your life. Because when you love here, you know what you're going to find? Imperfect love. Baby, I love you with all my heart. I don't know, because I hate your guts. I don't know why you're even saying that to me. Oh, baby, you broke my heart. Can somebody love me? Can you please love? We're, we're like love beggars. Somebody, mama, mama, like get out of here, you mooch. Go get a job. Mama, I'm your son. So what? Get a job. Nobody loved me here like, sometimes not even your own parents. Somebody say amen. amen. Who will love you? Even messed up Mickey. I started loving him messed up and I started to experience perfect love in my life. You know what perfect love will do to a broken heart? You know what perfect love will do to a broken mind? You know what perfect love will do to a broken body? What, what the, the, the professor of gastroenterology or gastro, is that how we say it? Gastroenterology, University of Miami, what he couldn't do in 10 years, Yeshua did in less than a year. Yeah. He, 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 loved, he, he loved my mind back to insanity, or in, from insanity to sanity. He loved my broken heart to a completely healed heart. And he loved my soul back to, from a broken soul, from a starving soul for love. He just filled me. And he filled me with his love. And when you're filled with the love of God, everything works better. Your digestion will work better. Your circulatory system will work better. You will breathe better. You will see better. You will smell better. You will look better. He is the lifter of our head. And his love, his love will encourage you to please him more. His love will empower you so when he asks you to do something, you will do it. Because now you're empowered to do and keep what he said. Now he can begin this beautiful new covenant that he promised. 
that now that your heart is on him, your mind, your soul, now that you're experiencing perfect love for the first time in your life, even parental, even he exceeds parental love. He's perfect love. I wish parents were like that, but even parents can't match that. Parents are imperfect people also. So, I mean, they mess us up from the time we're children. We sit on psychiatric couches telling a psychiatrist or a psychologist all these horrible things our parents did to us. <laughs> and you can't change anything. And if you speak to them, you know what they tell you? I, did my, I tried my hardest. I did my best. Yes, you love me with your broken life. And you love me with your broken love. And you broke me also. Thank you, Mom, and thank you, Dad. Yeah, you're an eight. And now, can somebody fix me? Can somebody help me? Can somebody love me back to health? Spiritual health, physical health. Can somebody love? Is there such a love down here? Not here. It has to be supernatural love. And the supernatural love comes from Him. But if you don't love him and you can't focus on him, he can't love on you because you're still out here looking for it. Somebody say, time to look in here for it. The kingdom of God is within you, within us. Yay or nay? Come on now. And what happened when I started getting healed? I started being much more loving to other people. I started treating people right because when you're hurt, and you're broken, you don't treat people right. Broken people don't make good friends. Broken minds don't make good companions. Broken bodies don't make good, good company. And so we mistreat other people because we've been mistreated ourselves. To this day, I still don't understand how people that are broken and mistreated by others go ahead and mistreat others. I still don't understand the, 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 the dynamic of that. But it happens on a regular basis. Amen. Abused people become abusers. Amen. And pass it on. It's like a curse. Yes. Like God said, to those that hate me, I will curse you to the third and fourth generation. Generational curses of broken people treating others that are broken and, break, and, and continue to break other people. God said this would happen. But it stops right here. I say that again. It stops right here. It stops right here. Everything that the enemy has done to us and to our ancestors and to our parents and to our grandparents stops right here. The curse stops in him. The blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we don't love our lives even to the very end. We overcome. And now we become people that were broken. Now we become the people of God. And he starts putting us together. And as he puts us together, he can put us in ministry to love other people. Because broken people cannot love on other broken people. And that's why he says, physician, heal thyself. In other words, you can only help somebody else when you're doing all right. I mean, in the world, can you give people money when you're broke? Can you give marital counsel when you've been divorced three times? Can you give financial counseling when you don't have three pennies in the bank? Can you give of yourself when you're not doing well? So God says, I want you to do well. I want you to change. I want to restore you. I want to, I, I want to make you whole. And then I'm going to use you as light and salt to other people that are broken. And you're not going to break them now. You're not going to mistreat them anymore. You're not going to throw, and you're not going to make them feel guilty, and you're not going to make them feel ashamed now. You're going to lift me up in front of them, and you're going to brag about me to other people, and you're going to tell them what I've done for you, and that this is for everybody, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish, should not have a garbage life,
should not be making excuses, should not live broken anymore. Here we go. Oh, it's getting good. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. See, the Bible says it was his turn to read and give testimony. And he got up in front of everybody, the Bible says, and the minister handed to him the reading from the prophet Isaiah. And he turned to Isaiah chapter 61 in front of the whole synagogue. And he began to read Isaiah chapter 61 to them. And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good things, or good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. What happens when God restores you? What happens when God changes your life? What happens when God takes a broken person and makes him better than he's ever made, been before and makes him whole. Who are you going to give credit to? Who are you going to say healed you? Who are you going to say restored you? The doctors, the nurses, the psychiatrist, the medication that I took? He healed me. He restored me. He came with the good news. He came with his words. He came with his laws. He came with his commandments. He came with the Holy Spirit. He gave it on the same day, on the day of Pentecost. Rejoice, Jewish people, non-Jewish people, for God has given us everything on the same day, on the Feast of Weeks, that we can, that we can, that we can glorify our God with not only his Holy Spirit, but all of his instructions, because that is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. How do I experience the wrath of God? We don't keep his commandments. How do I experience the love of God? You keep his commandments. Where do I start? Where he's set to start. Are you with me? Is this how it works? I know how it didn't work, and now I know how it actually worked. Somebody say, what he says is right. Notice what it says in verse 4 in Isaiah 61. They shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities. The desolation of many generations. Somebody who's restored. Somebody who's been, somebody who God has, has, has put back together better than before. Even if you think you're too far gone. How I many know nothing is too difficult for the Lord? How I many know the devil's a liar? It doesn't matter how broken you are. It doesn't matter how far you got from him. It doesn't matter what your condition is. Nothing is too hard for our God. All things are possible. Amen? Verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Verse 6. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in the land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be to them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All, the, all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Somebody say, I'd like for everyone to see my life that I am one of his that he has blessed. When you're blessed by God and you're restored by God, you don't have to do as much talking. You don't have to sell God. You don't have to push God. People will see. People know when you're blessed and people know when you're not blessed. Come on now. 
I've had to do a lot less convincing now, Mickey. I don't have to do anything. I just have to just praise God. Praise God this. Praise God that. Praise God I'm enjoying the best health in my life. Praise God I've never been this happy. Praise God for my marriage. Praise God for my wife. Praise God for what he has done in my life. He's not just a one-time God. He's not a one-miracle God. My whole life now is a miracle. Blessings will overtake you, God said to the nation of Israel. When was the last time you said, God, stop blessing me, it's too much? Most of us are like beggars. God, please, one thing, just this one thing, I'll be your best friend. No, it's like, God, stop. I can't take it anymore. My heart can't take it. No one's loved me this much. No one's been this good to me. No one's taken care of me this way. Amen. Somebody say, time to enjoy that. Amen. Time to have that. Amen. Not just have salvation. Be blessed above everyone else. And brag about your Father who is in heaven. Amen. And what he has done for you. Amen. Time to brag on him. And time to have something to brag about. I got something to brag about. I, my, my, I, I've never smiled this much in my entire life. My face hurts. I'm familiar with depression. I'm familiar with moodiness. I'm familiar with anger. I'm familiar with unforgiveness. I'm familiar with physical sickness. I'm familiar with all those things. When you live that way, you got nothing to smile about. I got everything to smile about. I can eat anything right now. Didn't we have spicy chicken wings the other night? Oh, were they delicious. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I ate one spicy chicken wing, when I had ulcerative colitis, you would have had to dial 911. I wouldn't even made it to the hospital. Now I'm just like, hmm, these spice. Give me the hottest chicken wings, please. If they only knew, if they only knew that I was happy praising God ordering spicy chicken wings today because I can eat a spicy chicken wing. I couldn't eat a spicy chicken wing. I don't think I could eat an a, a, a unspicy chicken wing. I don't think I could eat anything fried. You know, when your stomach is messed up, fried food will kill you. Now eat fried food with spice. That's how you know you're healed. Amen. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Somebody say, time, time to live this way. Verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth her bud, verse 11, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. He will cause. It's not by power and might, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. Somebody say, time to make connection with the Holy Spirit. Time to start walking in the first and great commandment. Time to start fighting the good fight of faith. Time to stop letting people dis allow you to be disconnected from God. That's the devil. Because he knows when you're connected to God what happens. He knows when you're in the spirit what happens. He knows the reward of the wicked. He is the king of the wicked. Time to connect with God. Time to walk in God. Time to, time to reap all the benefits of being connected to God. Time to say, I'm, he's our God and we're his people. New covenant. And we'll read that and we'll stop. Because I'm ready to jump out of my skin. I don't know about you guys. Somebody say, I'm a new covenant believer. How does this new covenant work? Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make. New covenant. Somebody say, new covenant. Not like the covenant that I made. With the house of Israel and the house of Egypt. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant. Somebody say, what happens when you break? 
You'll be the least in the kingdom of God. What happens when you break and you teach other people to break? You'll be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say, time to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Which covenant they break. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. I, I, I need you here. Somebody's excited about God. Somebody say, time to get excited about God. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Although I was a husband to them, saith the Lord. Which covenant they break, although he was. If he was a husband that, and they broke, that means they, they weren't a good bride. Time to become a good bride. Time to become the bride of the Messiah. Amen. Time to be a good bride. That's why it's good to have a good bride. She's teaching me how to be a good bride to him. Thank you, honey. You're doing a wonderful job. I wasn't kidding when I said that. I'll give you some cash later. <laughs> but this shall be the covenant. Somebody say, new covenant. What is the covenant? This shall be the covenant. Amen. What shall be the covenant? How is it going to be different? We'll get rid of the law. We'll get rid of the Holy Spirit. We'll say no to Jesus. We'll say no to Moses. Somebody say, time to say yes to Moses and yes to Jesus. Amen. But the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put... I will put what? What's he going to put? First, he wants your heart. First, he wants your mind. First, he wants your soul. First, he wants to love on you like you've never been loved before. He wants to restore your broken heart. He wants to restore your broken mind. Then he can write. Then he's got a willing vessel. Then he's got somebody who is empowered to do what he, what he, what he wants us to do. Now we're empowered by the anointing of God. What I couldn't do in the flesh, I can do in the spirit. Amen. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people because he will put and we will say, yes, Lord. I've never been loved this way before. I've never felt this good in my life. Shabbat's a piece of cake. Loving you is a piece of cake. Amen. Wasn't such a piece of cake before, Tessa. You know that. You deal with customer service. You've seen some of these people. I do much better in customer service now. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least to them? What makes you least? What makes you least in this kingdom? When you break and you teach to break. Is there least in the kingdom? Is there greatest in the kingdom? What's the difference between someone who's least and someone who's greatest? For they shall all know me from the least to them. So even if you break and you teach other people to break, you still know them. You still know the one you're teaching to break. Is that crazy? Is he merciful? It didn't say you would lose your salvation. This week I don't believe you can lose your salvation, Mickey. Because of what he just said here. You'll be least. You'll be the, you'll be the last in the kingdom. You'll be bringing up the rear. You won't be the greatest. You'll be the least. There's the greatest. Who are the greatest? The ones that do and the ones that teach his commandments. Those are the greatest. Those will be your ministers. Those are the ones that are going to be doing the best in the kingdom of God. You're not going to lose your salvation, but you won't be blessed above everybody else. Somebody say, time to be greatest in the kingdom. In order to be greatest in the kingdom, you've got to do what he says, and you've got to teach others. Does that make sense? Come on, Peter. That makes sense. What are you going to tell people? Not to do what God says? Why did he give the Ten Commandments? Why did he write them on stone? So that we should break them? Or that we should do them? So you stand there every week, Rabbi Peter, and you say, folks, time to do what God says. Where do I start? Where he said to start. And you'll be one of the greatest ministers. 
in sunrise? When you do what he says and you tell others, don't break, do. Don't be just a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. What should I do? Where should I start? Where he said to start. And then he will put his laws, whatever he puts in your heart. Peter, whatever he puts in your heart, that's what you got to do. Lord told me to show up at the Mishkan. Why aren't you here? Lord told me to keep the Shabbat. Why aren't you keeping the Shabbat? Lord told me to love on Mickey. Why aren't you loving? Why are you being mean to Mickey? The Lord told me to give Mikey 20 bucks. The Lord told Mickey, I mean, Mickey, Mikey to give me 20 bucks. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Why don't you give him the 20 bucks? Just do whatever God tells you. Just keep on loving him and keep on loving other people as he directs you. Those who are led of the spirit, they're the sons of God. My sheep hear my voice. Somebody say, time to hear God. Time to draw close to God. Time to experience perfect love for the first time in your life. So the least to the greatest of them say to the Lord, for I will do what? Somebody say, we're under grace. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. As you love God with all your heart, as he tells you to do things, you may not always do the things that he tells you. Will he forgive you 100%? Will he not even bring it up anymore? He won't. I will remember your sin no more. So he will love you into submission. He will love you into pleasing him. Mickey, are you pleasing God because you're scared of him? Because he's punished you? Because he, he, he criticizes you all the time? Or because he just keeps on loving you? He just keeps on loving. He doesn't deny himself. If I ask, he answers. If I seek, I find. If I knock, he opens. He's an amazing God. It's his pleasure to give you the Holy Spirit, he said. I will never leave you or forsake you. That kind of love will heal you. That kind of love will restore you. That kind of love will draw you to submission. By the way, husbands, that's how you get your wives to submit. Let's stand up and out of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said he really gave the Ten Commandments on Pentecost. He really gave the Holy Spirit on the same day. Is it okay to put them both together? Is it okay to worship in spirit and in truth? Is that a true worshiper of God? Is that what Yeshua said? Somebody say, time to be a true worshiper of God. Time to be restored. Time to be light. Time to be salt. Time to shout it from the rooftops. Time to say a greater than Moses has come. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we praise you. We thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you for, Father God, thank you for putting Jewish people together with non-Jewish people. Thank you for the message of the Torah and the Holy Spirit. That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the word says. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Yeshua. Hamashiach, time to walk in the power of the anointing, time to walk in grace and truth, not grace without truth and not truth without grace, time to walk in grace and truth the same way he demonstrated, he is the way, the truth and the life, Father God, keep showing us this way and Father God that we would have a room full of people encouraging each other, Father God to love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, even if they're broken. All of our souls, even if they're, they're quenched. Even if others have not loved us as you love us. Father God, restore minds, restore broken hearts, restore broken bodies. 
Father God, I pray what, what you did for the nation of Israel, Lord, that when they came out of Egypt, that your word declares there was not one feeble among them. Father God, I lift up every brother and every sister. In the name above every name, the name Yeshua. Father God, that you would draw them to yourself. That even sickness would not be unto death, but be unto glory to you, Father God. To draw us closer to you. That you would use all things together for the good because we love you and because you called us for your purpose. Father God, we thank you for your purpose to be conformed into the image of your Son, our Messiah, our Savior, our King. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. In his name we pray, the name Yeshua, HaMashiach, the world knows him as Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen, Amen. Please give the Lord a big hand. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. We're going to close in. Worship. And then we'll do the Aaronic benediction. dismiss us with the beautiful ironic benediction such a wonderful blessing and in the meantime I want to encourage everybody stay um, break bread with one another encourage each other to love and good works um, and I want to thank every single person uh, who has been supporting this ministry with your ties with your love offerings with any volunteer work that you you offer to do um, we I like to stress that this ministry is entirely supported through voluntary contributions whether they're monetary or they're actual uh, you know projects and work that people donate their time to do so and we're very very grateful that that is miraculous and it really really ministers to me we do have a prayer team that is going to be here in the front if you have a need you want somebody to pray with you or pray for you we have a wonderful team of people that are ready willing and able to assist you so please avail yourself of their time and their efforts um, God bless you all I want to wish you all a Shavuot have a wonderful week we're going to be here next Friday we hope you'll join us and be a part of this wonderful time, this glorious time known as Shabbat. In the meantime, God bless you all. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, honey. We're going to close with what is known as the Aaronic benediction or the Aaronic blessing. It is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. First in Hebrew, then in English. <laughs> Isadunai panavalecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord Yeshua bless you and keep you. The Lord Yeshua make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord Yeshua lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua, the name of Yeshua, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. 
Amen, amen, amen. Shabbat shalom. Give the Lord another big hand. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. Please stay and eat some spicy chicken wings. <laughs>